Hello, and welcome to Greg Does Physics. My name is Greg, and uh, we're going to be doing some physics. Well, I should say with this first question, it's actually going to be more mathematical than physical. But um, that's because uh, we don't want to just jump into the deep end. I want to go through these problems, you know, easy and hard, introductory and advanced. And this is just sort of a pilot episode, if you will, um, proof of concept. And so for that reason, um, I'm going to be doing something on the easier side. And in fact, what we're going to be doing, uh, this problem in particular, is the first question, 1.1, out of Griffith's Intro to Electrodynamics. Um, and this is your standard textbook for undergraduate E&M, uh, if you're a physics major. Uh, for my uh, alma mater, it's a 300 level course, so the, ty the type of uh, course you might expect to take, say, in your junior year of college, of undergrad. And so this first question that we're going to be doing is very introductory. It focuses largely around um, just working with cross product and dot product, and specifically, uh, it says... Using the definitions in equations one and four and appropriate diagrams, show that the dot product and cross product are distributive. Um, I'm only going to be doing part A, which uh, which specifically asks you to show that they're distributive in the case where the three vectors are coplanar. Um, you could do it, uh, part B asks you to do in the general case. Uh, that's a bit more heavier on the uh, mathematical side. And uh, for that reason, um, I just want to start with something that's pretty easy and pretty short um, to show. So the alluded to equations, one and four, I already wrote up here. Uh, equation one is just uh, an equation for the dot product between two vectors A and B, and it's that the multiplication of the magnitudes times the cosine of the angle between them um, is equal to the dot product. Likewise, you have the definition for cross product, which is the same thing except sine instead of cosine. And specifically, this one is, is a vector quantity, not a scalar quantity. It's a vector quantity that is in the direction normal or perpendicular to both vectors A and B, and that would be given by the right-hand rule. Now, if we're going to show that these two vector that um, dot product and cross product are distributive, we're looking for equations in this form, uh, a vector dotted or crossed with a summation of two other vectors and saying that you can distribute that outer vector into it and get equations like this, the dot product of A and B plus the dot product of A and C is equal to the dot product of A with the summation of B and C, and likewise with cross product. Since we're gonna be doing this in the coplanar case, uh, that means that we can uh, orient ourselves into and draw this out on a two-dimensional flat board. You know, we don't have to be working in three-dimensional space where the vectors are going to be going off all in different directions. We can just say there there is some plane which we are going to orient such that it's within the board that these vectors all lie within. And this is an important concept um, in in math and really in physics is this idea of um, orientations, just orienting yourself in space. Because um, if you're looking at the relationship between two vectors, say the, the, the angle between them and their magnitudes, for example, is going to be the same whether they're oriented like this or like this. Um, and so it's up to us to just choose the coordinate system that works easiest for, it, for us. And in physics, that is something that is very useful to get a handle on because you'll often find that uh, in many questions, some of the hardest parts of the question isn't in going through and actually doing the math, it's setting up the problem in the first place. And finding the right way to set up that problem can make your life a whole lot easier. And so that brings us to how uh, we are going to draw these three vectors um, like I said, they're coplanar, so we can rep represent them in this two-dimensional axis. But we can also orient our axes such that, for example, this vector called A lies on the x-axis. And that makes it a lot easier to see the angles that it forms with 
vectors b, vectors c, and of course the summation of vectors b and c. Uh, moreover, another important concept is that vectors, they have a magnitude, they have a direction, they do not have a location. So if, for example, I'm walking at half a meter per second in the direction parallel with the board that way, um, my velocity vector is going to be the same whether I'm walking in that direction at that speed from here or from over there. It's direction and magnitude, but not location. And as a result, uh, we can slide the C vector rather than also having it be coming out of the origin. We can represent it over here at the tail end of B, and that makes it a lot easier to see the relationship with B plus C and just in general see how these different angles interact. So now that we have this drawn out, we can start actually getting into the math part here. And so using equation one in tandem with this representation, this equation that we have to prove for the uh, distributed property of dot product, this would look like the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B plus C is this, uh, excuse me, times the cosine of the angle between A and B plus C, which we defined over here as theta 1, is the same as the magnitudes of A and B cosine of their included angle. A and B we set over here as theta 2 plus A, C, cosine of the included angle between A and C. Again, since A we defined a B on this, we could call this the x-axis here. We'll call that, we can look at it up here and call it theta 3. Now, what we want to do is show that these are equal. And it's not too hard to do that. I mean, instantly we can just cross out the magnitudes of A because those are equal. And so our task then is to say, is the magnitude of b plus c times the cosine of theta 1 equal to b times cosine theta 2 plus c cosine theta 3? And really all you have to do is go back to our diagram here to see that. So this is b plus c here, and so the cosine of theta 1 would be the component of b plus c in the direction of a, i.e. this here. But likewise, the component, the b cosine theta 2, is the component of b in the direction of a as well, based on this is pretty simple trigonometry to, uh, to see this. So that would be here as well. And then likewise with c over here. And we can see by putting them uh, tip to tail here, it's pretty easy to see how the x components of, well, as we define them, x components, but really they're the components that are in the direction of a, if you add them up with B and C, it's going to be the same as the component of the summation of B plus C in that direction. And that's the underpinning here. So, boom, you know, based on our, diagra based on our diagram, based on our explanation, proves it pretty well. And likewise, it's a simple, it's very similar for, for cross products as well. You know, we basically have the same equation except in this case with um, sine instead of cosine, and also with this n hat, the uh, normal direction. And again, we can cross out the magnitudes of A, and we actually can even ignore these n hats. The reason being is because if we do right hand rule here, i.e. we go in the direction of A with our fingers like that, and then um, basically it would be direction of A like that, put your fingers up in the direction of B or B or C or the summation of them, regardless where you're going to be getting is that um, the direction is in the same direction uh, for the cross products of all of these, um, which would be positive z hat or negative z hat, depending on, on which direction you have it in. 
And so we can ignore those n hats safely. And again, we basically come down to the same mathematical underpinning as with the with the dot product, only the difference is, is that rather than looking at this component uh, in the direction of A, this horizontal component, instead what we're gonna be looking at is the vertical component. And it's basically this idea that the magnitude of B plus C times sine of theta one, that's the vertical component, or the really, it'd be more accurate to say, the, the vertical component in these axes, it would be more accurate to say the component that is normal to the uh, vector a or the direction of vector a and then that comes from the summation of the component of b and the components of c in the same direction and adding them up they clearly are equal and so just from this it's not a very mathematical proof um but this diagram diagram illustrates it pretty well the how that this distributive property arises um, and just based on, you know, this simple diagram, we can quickly see how it holds up and how it creates this, how it proves um, that, at least for the coplanar case, uh, that dot product and cross product are distributive. Thank you.